Die Hard, The Dark Knight, Indiana Jones, and The Matrix. All of these films have amazing action scenes. But where do we find great action in indie film on YouTube? From this guy. It's more than time, bitches. Hey, I'm Jesse, and this is Video Tempest, where we plow through the storm of YouTube content, bringing you reviews, critique, and analysis. And today, we're looking at one of Adi Shankar and his bootleg universe's biggest hits, Power Rangers. For a non-profit fan production, this short film is an amazingly entertaining reimagining of the Power Rangers universe, with a much darker twist. Fans of the original who are into gritty action movies with tons of blood and violence will love this flick. While many movies are dramas with action moments in them, this film flips that on its head. It is outstandingly an action film with dramatic moments in it. These moments are used for exposition, telling the audience what they've missed in the 20 years since they've watched Power Rangers on TV while devouring Cocoa Puff cereal in their Superman pajamas. They explain why Rocky betrayed the group, who the Rangers grew up to be, and how they ultimately met their demise. These moments don't slow down the pace of the movie, however. Director Joseph Kahn made sure there was always a constant energy, and he did this through effective use of music, pacing, and camera movement. This is perfectly demonstrated in this moment. Rita made Tommy to fight against us. And then he betrayed her, switched sides, Mommy tried to kill him. And he lost his power, gained it back, lost again. Only he's just a treaty sign. I'm out. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not his shrink. Say what you want about the machines, at least they're consistent. What does this have to do with me? Despite this being an expositional moment, it's effective firstly because of the music. Its dark tone has an underlying rhythm, an arpeggiated synth that has an auto panner on it that shifts it constantly left and right in our speakers, keeping us on edge, and we know that we're working our way towards something. Secondly, we have a camera move here. It keeps focus on Rocky while dollying in diagonally transitioning from a wide to an over the shoulder, and finally moving to a profile shot just before the cut. This is a complicated camera move. There's a lot of motion in this scene, and the focus puller is doing one hell of a job keeping Rocky in focus throughout. But ultimately, it keeps the energy up, and it makes us feel like we're getting somewhere while Rocky talks. The shot also exemplifies Joseph Kahn's skill as a director. A lot of filmmakers will fall into a trap with a scene like this, not giving their actors anything to do aside from deliver their lines. That's a mistake. In this case, we have Rocky take the opportunity to rest his mechanical leg on the table and dust it off. A simple move, but it quietly establishes his superiority and shows us how confident and comfortable he is in this situation. But enough talk about how we keep the energy up in the in-between parts. Let's get to the good stuff. The action scenes themselves. The opening scene is simply done, though VFX heavy. It draws us into the movie immediately, the frantic pace of the movie is immediately set. The sequence has two main purposes in addition to setting the stage for the short. To show us the gritty reality of this world, setting it apart from the old TV show, and to give us a bit of foreshadowing with this shot. We're shown the Pink Ranger's helmet, beaten and scarred on the ground. While this visual is striking and very much symbolic of the movie, it's important as well. At the end of the movie, we're shown that the Kimberly we've watched and empathized with throughout the previous 11 and a half minutes isn't who we think she is, and that Tommy held the real Kimberly as she died on the battlefield from that opening scene. In fact, we can see her helmet in the same position as that opening scene on the left side of this shot. This is an excellent example of bookending a film, ending where we began, but with a more complete knowledge of the situation. Speaking of the end, let's talk about that final fight real quick. After building throughout the film to this climactic moment, we finally get to see Rocky face off against Tommy. One of the tropes we expect with a final battle is to have a moment just beforehand that establishes the superiority of both characters and develops tension and a sense of gravitas. You, my dear, are bait. <laughs> Rocky is at his most superior moment when he declares that Kimberly is bait, which is immediately derailed by the lights going out and all of the surrounding soldiers being turned to mincemeat by a shadowy figure. 
This is a moment that is designed to show Tommy's badassery, his mastery of violence, and establishing him as almost supernaturally fast. Similarly, this shot is designed to do the same for Rocky, but since his superiority has been demonstrated throughout the film, we just need a moment to go, ooh, the bad guy is pissed. This is accomplished by a quick dolly out from the fallen soldier, the awesome sword unveil, and the powerful clank against the floor. We cut into the expressions of both men as the music builds, and we get a sort of good, bad, and ugly moment as the tension quickly rises to a breaking point. Everything in this scene is designed to show the talents of both men. Tommy is fast and agile, and while Rocky is considerably slower, he's much stronger. A single blow from his sword causes a shower of sparks as a concrete pillar cracks. Meanwhile, Tommy cartwheels and backflips out of the way. One of the things that makes this a really great fight to watch is the music. It's intense and awesome, kind of reminiscent of some sort of dubstep doom motif or something. It builds throughout the fight to what I consider one of the best action moments of the film. The two powers clash with as much fervor as the robots at the beginning of the film, but shown entirely through the expression in Rocky's face, the sparks from the swords clashing, and the awesome synth power of the score. Just listen to it. This moment makes the film for me. It's a great moment of action that showcases the two equally matched powers coming to literal blows while also showing Rocky's determination to win. But when it comes to great action moments in this film, the Black Ranger fight takes the cake. We're sort of faked out by the comic relief beforehand when Rocky asks Kimberly about Zack, do you know where he ended up? And she states, About those hip hop keto tapes. We immediately cut into a comical shot of hip hop keto playing on a VHS tape. What do you mean you don't know what a VHS tape is? Kids these days. <laughs> anyway, Zack breaks into a North Korean warehouse with a bunch of gangsters who are all ready to blow him to smithereens and exchanges some words in Korean with Mr. Fancy White Suit. What I love about this moment is that Joseph Kahn cuts the music, but keeps the energy up throughout the scene with not just compelling animated characters, but a really innovative use of text. Instead of opting for traditional boring subtitles, he uses this opportunity to showcase animated, stylistic titles that change, flicker, and float across the screen. His subtitles are accomplishing the same effect as the camera moves we discussed earlier. They carry a sense of urgency and make us feel as if things are still happening quickly, despite the slower pace of this conversation. The fight itself begins as absurdly as the hip-hop keto gag beforehand, with this sequence. Ah! What the heck in frack? Let's look at that again. One more time. Nope, it's still just as silly as the first time I saw it. But hey, film is all about suspension of disbelief and awesome fight scenes, of which this is. This is quite possibly the most quintessential Power Rangers-esque scene in the entire film, despite the graphic and gratuitous gun violence. It's littered with awesome martial arts flips and tricks, mixed with badass style like this. But quite possibly the most impressive moment of the fight isn't the quick flashy cuts and artistic camera movement, but the final showdown between Zack and Mr. Fancy White Suit. After cutting down all but one of the gangster lackeys, who backs away in fear as White Suit grabs the knife from him and slits his throat out of spite, we get this sequence. No cuts, no camera moves aside from a slow zoom. Just two actors 
showcasing fight choreography at their absolute best. And you know, after all this, maybe that's what really matters. Maybe you don't need special effects, CGI, fast cuts, or insane camera movement to make a truly great action scene. Maybe all you need is a great fight choreographer, a camera, two actors who are great at what they do, and 30 seconds of awesomeness. Ah, who am I kidding? We love all that other shit too. Hey, if you haven't already, go ahead and head on over to Adi Shankar's Bootleg Universe and give the whole short a watch. And let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite action moment in this film? I absolutely love action movies. I've been a huge fan of them since watching John Woo's Face Off and Broken Arrow over and over as a kid. And doing this review was a blast. I have another action short review coming down the pipe very soon too, so make sure to subscribe and tap the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you'd like to help support more content like this, please consider becoming a patron. My Patreon link is in the description of this video and every bit helps. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.